Although a new and developing realm of climate change studies, cities present a unique set of circumstances within which climate change impacts are playing out. In this lecture, we'll examine the key vulnerabilities and impacts related to climate change in the urban context. While cities in developing countries often face more significant risks than those in the wealthy industrialized world, cities around the globe share stresses that will only grow as urbanization and climate change impacts increase. In this lecture, we'll explore cities as a unique microcosm of climate change impacts on human systems. We'll begin by introducing the overwhelming trend towards urbanization, which is gaining momentum. We'll then consider the key vulnerabilities faced by cities, as well as key impacts. These impacts include effects on human health, insured losses associated with infrastructure that's vulnerable to extreme events, and the global ripple effects from climate change in more vulnerable areas, such as security issues and environmental refugees. In the middle of 2008, humanity reached an unusual tipping point. Hailed by some as the arrival of the urban millennium, that year marked the point at which more people in the world were living in cities than outside of them. While this may not seem surprising to Western Europeans or to North Americans, this is a revolution in Africa, China, and India. Cities are often regarded as places of concentrated wealth and opportunity, drawing people from more traditional subsistence lifestyles in developing countries. Cities in developed countries are particularly significant sources of greenhouse gas emissions as well. Cities may account for up to 75% of global greenhouse gas emissions. The concentration of people in cities has a significant effect on our vulnerability to climate change. First of all, extreme events that hit cities are clearly more likely to cause catastrophic loss of life than in sparsely populated rural areas. The billions of dollars invested in city infrastructure also dramatically increases the cost of extreme events, the frequency and severity of which we expect to increase in the future. We're also often disconnected from the source of our food in cities, making us more vulnerable to disruptions in the food system. Finally, our systems of energy and fresh water provision, as well as sewage removal, are extremely susceptible to large-scale malfunctions when compared with resilient, decentralized systems. Urban environments have always presented unique challenges to human health, and these challenges are only expected to be exacerbated by climate change. During the heat wave of 2003 in Western Europe, for instance, it's estimated that over 40,000 people died as a result of heat stress in France and Italy alone. Many of these were vulnerable populations, such as the elderly in cities, who were unable to obtain reprieve from this exceptional heat. Due to the urban heat island effect, the result of concentrated, dark paved surfaces and waste heat from energy usage, cities are actually a couple of degrees warmer than surrounding areas. This lends itself to enhanced air quality problems and related respiratory illnesses. Food and waterborne diseases are particularly important impacts in developing countries. As temperatures rise, we expect to see a shift in the incidence of such illnesses, with disproportionately high mortality in urban areas. Similarly, infectious diseases tend to spread more easily in cities where contact with carriers can be more frequent. Cities represent concentrations of billions of dollars of fixed investments in infrastructure that can't be removed in the face of an imminent extreme event. As we saw with Hurricane Katrina in the southern United States, even cities in wealthy countries are vulnerable to weather and climatic extremes that are expected to become more frequent and more severe in a changing climate. This graph from the Association of British Insurers demonstrates the increasing trend in losses associated with weather-related events. Although part of this increase is due to the fact that we're increasingly developing in vulnerable areas, researchers have found that changing weather patterns are a really strong signal as well. In Module 9, we'll explore the ways in which some cities have chosen to adapt their infrastructure to prevent some of these losses. But accurate impact assessments and adaptation planning are really still in their infancy. While cities in the wealthy industrialized world often appear insulated against the worst of the human impacts of climate change, it's unlikely to remain so for long. Some scientists estimate that more than 300 million environmental refugees might be created by climate change by the mid-21st century. These are individuals whose livelihoods have been lost to drought, to extreme weather events, food shortages, and the conflict brought on by those impacts. 
Some scholars anticipate waves of this new form of refugee seeking the chance to live safely in countries that have not borne the brunt of climate change. So, developed countries should expect to be forced to address tough questions regarding the ethics of denying livelihoods to those who have lost theirs as a result of greenhouse gas emissions from those same developed countries in which the refugees seek asylum. During this lecture, we've been introduced to cities as microcosms of climate change impacts on human systems. We've considered the trend toward urbanization that has brought more than half of the planet's population into cities and the key vulnerabilities that cities face. We've also explored human health, insured losses, and global ripple effects such as environmental refugees as key impacts that we're already beginning to see in cities. Next, we'll explore the particularly complicated issue of climate change impacts on human systems in developing countries.